So welcome everyone. Uh, we're glad you could join us this afternoon for Orca Love Live. I'm going to share <laughs> my screen, Natalie, uh, and uh, I'll sort of uh, walk us through what we're going to do as far as an introduction. But first of all, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, it's kind of a special time when uh, we're all sort of stuck at home, kind of trying to figure out what's normal in our lives for the next little bit. And uh, so being able to get together in this environment to be able to do some learning and interacting with other people is really kind of a neat privilege. Is there anything you want to say before we start, Natalie? I just want to say welcome. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, during this kind of crazy time in our world, um, it's just nice to take the opportunity to join people, to be able to come online um, and, and share some inspiring things. So I'm hoping to share um, with everyone here. Uh, so this is a film I made, um, but really it, it, it's for me, it's wanting to inspire people to see the beauty that we have in our world, um, to inspire people to, you know, realize what we, what we have, what we still have, um, and, and to, to share that. So um, thank you for coming. Um, and yes, I'm very happy to do this. It's a wonderful world and we're stuck, a lot of us, in, in sort of artificial worlds. So this is a nice diversion to remember that we're part of that. Thanks, Natalie. Um, so just for, uh, let everyone know what's going on. This is the first of a few sessions we're hoping to do in the month of April. Uh, and in this workshop, we're gonna introduce you to the people that are in the film that Natalie worked with. Uh, and you'll meet all of these people in greater detail once you see the film. And at the very end of this little talk, and chat will uh, walk you through how you can go and see the film at home and how you can share that maybe with uh, your family at home or if you know of other people that wanna see the film, you could share it with them and then uh, maybe they can join us in the next discussion. So just who the heck's this Rod guy? First of all, <laughs> he's got the same last name as the filmmaker. I'll just let you know, <laughs> uh, I am, uh, I've been teaching for well over 30 years, I retired from teaching in the classroom a few years ago, K to 12, uh, but I've done all manner of things. And most of what I do is try to bring people together using technology to do kind of interesting things. And this film has given me an opportunity to think about how uh, we might introduce young people and teachers to some tools to learn more about the world around us and orcas in particular. Um, so if you wanna know more about me, Google my name, you'll see kind of the, the types of things I teach people to do and the projects I'm involved in. Uh, but this project in particular um, is about Natalie. And so just by way of brief introduction, Natalie, um, maybe you can tell a little bit about uh, who you are and how you came to be out on the west coast of Canada. Okay, so brief introduction. So my name is Natalie. Um, and I went to school for filmmaking, uh, actually in Oakville. I went to Sheridan College and I took the advanced television and film program there. And I studied documentary filmmaking and I've always loved, you know, reading real stories or meeting people um, and interviewing them, you know, to learn more about them. Um, and I've always just been fascinated by, you, you know, what's real in our world. So um, with studying documentary uh, and after I graduated, it was like, okay, I really want to make a documentary documentary film uh, and what should I make a film about? Well, I love orcas. Uh, so orcas are killer whales and they've always been my favorite animal. And I basically learned everything I could learn about them by reading every book and watching every film I could see. And I thought, you know what, I want to go out to BC and I, I would love to just learn more about these whales and, and film them. Um, and I was lucky that um, I was able to go to Orca Lab, uh, which is based in northern Vancouver Island area. Uh, and they study the whales, you know, all year round. Um, and I was able to go there as a filmmaker to film the whales in the wild and to learn from the researchers there. So it was an extraordinary experience. Um, I went out there to start filming in 2012, the summer of 2012. Uh, and it took five years uh, to end up, you know, completing this film. So it is my first feature film, um, something I'm very proud of. It took a lot of my life um, and time and energy to create. Uh, but it is something now that finally, you know, it got finished, completed in 2017. Uh, and now it's still rolling out. Uh, we're still getting, we're just getting it out there to everybody. Um, but it's something I'm proud of. And it's something for me that really is, you know, my whole heart is, is, you know, the whales, our planet, um, 
what really matters. And, and so I'm happy to share that with the world. Um, and, and in this film, beyond the orca starring, all of these people on the screen are in the film some places. And so what we want to do is give people a chance to get to know a little bit about who these people are before they go and see the film. And that's what today's all about. So why don't we get started with uh, Wayne Alfred. Natalie, how did you meet this man? And what is he? <laughs> who is he? What's he all about? So Wayne Alfred um, is from Alert Bay. Um, and he's an amazing um, artist. He's a carver, totem carver. Um, and I met him actually through his cousin, Joe, who lived in Alert Bay. Um, and Joe was someone who would come and visit me um, as I was with Orca Lab filming, you know, in a little hut on the ocean on my platform. Joe used to come in his boat and, and come and say hi to me most days. He, he would be working for the fisheries and oceans sort of um, checking out who's on the water and, and what's their catch for the day. But he would always come in and visit me and, and see, you know, what are you doing? You're filming whales. <laughs> and uh, anyways, he said, you know, come have dinner at my house, come meet my family. And I did. And then he told me I need to come and meet his cousin Wayne uh, because he loves to share his art. He loves to share, you know, the purpose of, you know, the meaning behind his totem carvings and things like that. Uh, and he ended up being in the film and, and sharing, you know, the purpose behind the carvings and sort of what the meanings are. Um, so. Yeah, really special to have Wayne be a part of this film. To me, he is just, he's mesmerizing when he's on the film. You can't take your eyes off him. He's such a good storyteller and a uh, really, really rich uh, part of the film. Um, to learn more about him, um, Spirit Wrestler Gallery is one of the places where you can find out about um, Wayne and his work. And the website link is there. I'll let everyone know that uh, the slides for this presentation will tell you where you can access them later if you want to hyperlink to all of these places. And again, the recording will be available if you want to revisit them. But uh, you can learn more about each of these people and we'll point you to where you can. But this is where you can find out about Wayne. Now, Billy Proctor, I don't know, what's, what's the best way to describe Billy? <laughs> Billy is a legend. <laughs> Everybody knows Billy Proctor. Um, he lives out in Echo Bay, a very remote island in northern BC as, as a part of the Broughton Archipelago Islands. Um, and he has lived on an island his whole life. He's never lived on land. Um, he's either lived in a boathouse or, you know, on an island. So he's, he's been around the ocean his whole life. Uh, and he has lots of stories to share about growing up on an island. Uh, growing up, you know, among these waters where the killer whales swim by, where, you know, the salmon are. And, and he just, he's, he's such a fish guy. He just loves fish so much. Um, and he really shares his love of fish, uh, uh, you know, in those coastal waters. Um, but also he, he, he grew up never going to school. He never went to a proper institution to go to school. Uh, he grew up sort of learning off of living off of the land and being with his mother and his things. Um, and so it's sort of extraordinary to meet somebody in today's day and age that didn't go to school, but is educated um, and has a lot of knowledge to share. So definitely. Has, he, in, many, in many ways, he has wisdom that school doesn't teach about. Yes, um, definitely. And I think he, al he also has a museum that you can go visit uh, if you go to Echo Bay. He's got, you know, Billy's museum there. These are sort of artifacts and things that he has collected on beaches his entire life. And some of them are, you know, could be bought by real museums because they are, he's found little spearheads and he's found these, you know, old glass bottles and things from, you know, old times. Um, but he's created this museum to share. And, and when you go to his museum, he'll invite you in and he'll have a story for every piece. He'll tell you what, what beach he found it on, uh, you know, what he thinks it is, how old it is. So he has a fascination with, with sharing you know his life stories and his experience um and and also his love of echo bay and that area of the broughton archipelago which is a beautiful sort of untouched beautiful part of british columbia in northern northern bc there so um he's he's a very special guy and he's got a lot of passion for fish and for wildlife and for you know, you know growing up wild this billy's wild he he and he inspires me especially for my son to want him to grow up wild and not be so, 
you know, in a box, like you need to do this and then you need to do this and then Mm -hmm. you need to do this. Billy, Billy grew up, you know, wild and free. And I think that that's an amazing way to be. So it's really special to have Billy in the film. Now, one of the other characters in the film is, and speaking of the wild, growing up wild, (laughs) he's got to have his little starring role. Scott Rogers is in the film. What can you tell us about Scott? Yes, so Scott Rogers, uh, amazing biologist, sort of scientist, um, and she worked a lot with Alexandra Morton, uh, studying the salmon, uh, studying wild salmon and studying, you know, sea lice that that became a problem with the wild salmon. So uh, I met I met Scott in in the Echo Bay area, um, and she mostly does a lot of her research by boat, uh, catching fish and studying them, and working with Salmon Coast Research Station. So through Salmon Coast Research Station, I met Scott Rogers. So she's, she has a lot of knowledge to share about the health and wealth of the salmon. Uh, and a lot of that coming from Alexandra Morton, who's, who's somebody I deeply, you know, have looked up to my whole life. So really, really amazing to have Scott Rogers share her knowledge of what she's learned studying the salmon um, and what, you know, their health tells us about the health of the ocean. And, and being that the salmon fry are such a, they're such a small organism when they're trying to grow into these big salmon, but they have a huge impact as little baby salmon on the, the, the life and, and sort of the family legacy of the whole uh, pods of these orcas. Uh, and having salmon be, you know, the number one food that the, the resident whales like to eat, you know, if the salmon are sick, you know, the whales will be sick. So it's important to, to go down the food chain and kind of see. And that's what brought me to, to uh, you know, interviewing the researchers about the salmon was because it is the number one food source for the killer whales. So people yeah. will learn more about that in the film. But more than that, in, in another chat, when we get together again uh, in a week or, or maybe the following week, uh, we'll be able to talk about the, the impacts of the, the salmon on them. And the Salmon Coast Fields uh, Station, you can visit and look it up online. There's the link. Um, but if you want to learn more before, during, or after the film, that's a way that you can find out more about what's happening in Canada regarding uh, the, the life of salmon. Oops, just a second here. And Paul Spong, <laughs> this man, he seems to me like he's a legend who doesn't know he's a legend. He's done so many remarkable things. Paul Spong, yes. He is the founder of Orca Lab, which is, Orca Lab is the organization that hosted me for the summer there, summer of 2012, when I was wanting to go and fill, film the orcas in the wild. Um, he, he was the founder of Orca Lab. He's been studying whales. He started studying them in captivity, and then he moved into studying them in the wild. But this is back in the 70s. You know, this was a long time ago. Um, so he, if you look up Orca Research in Canada, he's, he's one of the main people who've been studying the orcas in the wild for this long. Um, and he knows a lot about the orcas. He knows them all by name. He knows, you know, a lot about them. Um, and, and each time one dies, you know, he'll go out off about a story about that whale and, you know, how long he's known that whale for. Um, so it's pretty extraordinary to, to be able to learn from somebody who it, it's a part of him. It's a part of his life, you know, his life and soul is the whales and living amongst them. So that's, you can see the building in the back of that photo. That's Orca Lab. That's their main base. Uh, And their main observation deck is is alongside there. Um, And his house, if you just look down the walkway to the left, he lives in that little house just there. So he lives very close to where they do all of the research for Orca Lab. Um, And when I was there filming, I I was at the main lodge, uh, the main observation area for a little while, but I was actually put out on an outpost on on my own little island um, right on the Johnston Strait. So it was a prime area to, to film the whales. Although you do get to see them come by right by this area as well in Blackfish Sound. That's the, the waterway you see right in front there. Um, and so they do come here and it, and it is a very special area. Uh, it kind of is a little cove here. So yeah, so, so Paul lives here with his wife um, and they live, it's more of a summer home. They're there in the summer months in the nice weather. And then as the, the harsh winter comes in, which, you know, um, it, it, it never is too harsh. You know, it's pretty moderate. Um, temperate there, uh, Vancouver Island area, but he goes to Alert Bay for the winters. So they have a home in Alert Bay, but this is this is where they do all the all the orca research in the summer, and that's where you'll find him in the nice weather. 
And this, yeah. this is a, just a hyperlink to Orca Lab, um, sort of yeah. the website where you can find out more. Um, it, were there, was there, is this where you can find, uh, I know there, we'll be talking about whale sounds in particular, but do they have those on the website? Um, yeah, I think they may have some that you can listen to. They do also have live video on their website uh, and through their, if you follow Orca Lab, they have uh, live video cameras up and running. Just a minute, Everest. They have live video up and running where they, they capture the whales as they're coming through um, and they broadcast it live. So all around the world, you can see the whales, which is pretty extraordinary. Um, and this picture that you see here is actually um, where I was. That's, uh, that's on Craycroft Island, and it's the point where I was filming from. Um, and there's a little tiny hut there, and that's where I slept, just a little bed area in there and a little cook stove. But yeah, beautiful area right there on the Johnson Street. So just my son's here. I'm half, half kind of. <laughs> Mom, if I keep being quiet, yeah. this one will be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to like just, just let mommy do her thing for a little bit. <laughs> Now, in many ways, Alexandra Morton was was the start of uh, this whole film. When you were very, very young, uh, she had an mm -hmm. impact on you that led you here. And then she appears in the movie. What's that like to have to have this author come aboard? I almost want to see if I can grab a book off my shelf, which is there. Um, so she wrote a book uh, called Siwiti, A Whale's Story. And when I was a young child, it was my favorite book because it's a real book with live photos, you know, real live photos of killer whales in the wild. Um, and so her husband at the time uh, was, a, was a filmmaker, actually. And so he was doing underwater filmmaking back in the 80s. Uh, and he, he was filming the whales as well. He unfortunately had an accident trying a new uh, rebreathing system. Thank you, Everest. Um, and he passed away when he was trying to film the whales. Um, but she had, you know, studying the whales and being around them uh, has been a part of her life, her entire life. Well, since she was <laughs> in her twenties, I guess she started studying the whales in California and then moved to BC. Um, and she lives on Santula Island, like Santula, which is on an island and it's, you know, beautiful area where the whales always come through. Um, and she then moved her research from killer whales to salmon because she followed and that's how I, you know, you just learn, but she, her love of the killer whales turned into her love of the salmon wanting, you know, almost wanting the whales to be healthy and, and learning when she was learning that the salmon were actually thick. She wanted to find out why, why were they getting sea lice? What's going on? Um, and then starting salmon coast field station. So, so Alexandra Morton started that field station to bring in university students and biologists who are who want to study what's happening uh, with the salmon and and take samples and learn what's happening um, and figure out you know why are they getting sick and 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 how can we fix this you know what's the solution so so that's the field station where Scott Rogers mm -hmm. yeah right? okay very good so if you want to learn more about Alexandra Morton you can um, but let's move on who else is in the film. This is someone I know is very close to your heart. Um, many of you may know of Rob Stewart or his films. Um, can you talk a little bit, Natalie, about how you met Rob uh, as a starting point? Sure. So Rob Stewart is someone I've always looked up to as a filmmaker. And when I was a film student uh, at Sheridan in Oakville, a part of my film studies was I needed to go and have an internship um, to complete my filmmaking program. I had to have an internship. So. I decided, well, I love documentary film and I love, you know, Canadian film. Well, I want to intern with someone who I look up to and, and who I value their work. And so Rob was that guy. Rob was based in Toronto. His film, you know, company is based there. And he was an active filmmaker working on new projects. Um, and so, yeah, I connected with him through his production company in Toronto. And then luckily I got an internship with them, with Sharkwater Productions. So I was lucky to work with Rob. Uh, and I helped a lot with his movie after Sharkwater called Revolution. Um, and I helped to, you know, facilitate booking his interviews that he would then go and shoot <laughs> um, and making sure, you know, doing the research on who's the best, you know, who's the best person, you know, for this topic that, that knows everything about it um, and that sort of thing, Get, getting the right experts. Um, and then sort of the background research on what's going on um, and working with his assistant director, Jen, and just anything really that he needed. It's like, guys, I need this. Let's go do it. And I was really a part of like helping just get things done. Um, but he taught me, you know, if you want to do something, 
like you go and do that. You know, you don't, people are going to, you know, not believe you or think you're crazy or just tell you, you can't do that. Like, you know, but Rob was always someone like, it's like almost like you tell him he can't do it. He will show you how to do it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I really learned from him that you don't take no, you don't take no, no doesn't really exist. Like if you really, uh, you know, are passionate about something and you really want to go and do it, then you go and do that. So I learned from him, never give up. You know, you have a dream, go and do it. Um, and his films are still getting seen around the world. Um, he's still, you know, looked up to by so many people. And, and when I told Rob, oh, I'm making a film now <laughs> on the killer whales. And I asked him if he wanted to be a part of it. He's like, of course, of course, I'd love to support you. And he was so proud of me as being a, a filmmaker who graduated from film school that then was then going to make a film. And he was like, eh, you know, I'd love to see your work. I'd love to help you with whatever you need. So he was super happy to be a part of this project. Um, yeah, and so I, I was lucky that I got to interview him in Toronto. And after the interview was done, he was like, okay, you know, that's great. Um, I, I want to be seeing your cuts. I want to like give you feedback on how the film's going. And he really wanted to be a mentor in, in, in the part of, of completing this film. Uh, unfortunately, we lost him before that happened, but I'm just so thankful that he, you know, he is a part of this film. His voice is heard and uh, he's got some amazing messages to share that really need to be heard, I think, throughout our planet. So I, I just, I'm thankful that we have him in the film. Oh, I'm very pleased that sort of more people are going to get to know him because of your film. Um, I mean, he died doing what he loved to do, but... Um it's tragic because he had so much more to share and now it falls to everybody else to sort of carry on his messaging and his work, I guess, eh? Yes, so his latest film, Sharkwater Extinction, um, that he was filming, unfortunately, when he passed away. Um, you know, you can go see that film now. And and I feel close to his family in that I've, I've stayed in touch with them uh, and, and they do give us a thank you in the film. So if you see Sharkwater Extinction, his latest film, he does, they, they give a nice shout out to, to myself and to, to the Orchids with Love as well. So we're, we're in the credits there. Um, and it feels good, you know, that they, they're giving thanks to us and they know, you know, they want to support us in our film as much as we want to su continue to support Robin and his work. So. And, and people in Canada, if you're thinking about science, especially environmental science, it, and I, I, I remember asking my students, you know, name a famous scientist. Just name a famous <laughs> scientist. David Suzuki's the guy who they would they would mention. He's uh, he's been around for decades, um, working to help teach people and help people understand the world around us. And then you got a chance to interview him, and he's in the film. Tell us a little bit yes. of that story. Yeah, so David Suzuki, someone I looked up to, again, pretty much my whole life um, as a young girl watching The Nature of Things and just being fascinated, again, by doc his documentary style. You know, he would just be like, let's go and study this. And then he'd bring you to that place. And, and it's all real, you know. Um, and the way that also he talks to you, not, not in this scientific language that you don't understand. He, ta he talks very openly, you know, in, in a language that we all understand and that we all can relate to. Um, and as an environmentalist, I just looked up to him so much because he cares so much about our planet and wanting people to just understand the basics of, you know, we need clean air, you know, we need clean water, we need clean, we need a clean place to live in order to be healthy. And so those sorts of things are important to me. And I just think that, you know, the way that he gives off these messages, um, he lives it and breathes it and, and that's his life. And, and he is a legacy. So I think it, it, it just is having his support in this film and having him be a part of it, I think is pretty special. And if people want to know more about David Suzuki, the David Suzuki Foundation uh, website is one of the places where you can see what they're up to. But again, I think most people know about David that he's, he's got his finger in a lot of things, environmental. Um, but even now in this time of, of dealing with the, the COVID-19 virus uh, and the effects on people around the world, and in that crisis, David's website has got information about that to help Canadians uh, make make the right decisions about how they how they go about their business um so this is these are the people that helped make the film what it is and our encouragement to uh participants who want to see the film is now that you've got to know them dig deeper if you want a, a chance to get to know them even a little bit better um 
But what we want to do is, is, is show you now how you can actually see the film and see all of those people and then maybe join us for some follow-up discussions regarding the orcas. So the first thing is um, the websites are, are all linked. We'll show you how to get that. Um, we're going to talk to you and give you a demonstration about how you can go to orcamovie.ca in order to see the film. And the view code that we've given you is love. And so let's get into that just a little bit. And one thing I'd like to encourage people, if you're out there and you're doing something uh, and you want to talk about this, if you use the hashtag Orca Love Live on Facebook or on Twitter, anything like that, we'll see it and we'll be able to sort of join you and participate in that. But let me take a minute and uh, come, go to a web browser just to show people how they can see uh, the film. Just give me a second here. The dinosaur, where's the dinosaur, Natalie? Uh, let's see, look for opera. So, first thing is, I'm gonna go here to uh, orcamovie.ca. That's your starting point to, to catch up with the film and resources related to the film. But you'll notice here at the bottom where you can click watch the film that's where you can see the movie and we'll walk through that just so you know what's going on. Some people, you might be with a group of people that wanna show the film to a larger audience. And if you wanna show the film with other people, you can use that tab. Um, but under study guides, I just wanna talk briefly about what's available there if you wanted to learn more about the subject matter in the film. So there's a link here where you can download resources, including a whole bunch of slideshows on the issues related to, to the Orcas with Love. And it kind of looks like this. There are PowerPoint presentations. If you work on a Mac and prefer using a tool called Keynote, those slide decks are available. And there are almost a dozen um, PDF versions of those slideshows. So if you want to learn more about orcas or salmon or the oceans or acidity of the oceans, we're going to be talking about those things. But there's also all these resources online. You can um, learn more about those material, those, those topics. But let's say you want to watch the film uh, with a family or share with other people. Here are the steps you need to do. Natalie, you tell me if I'm doing this right, okay? So I'm just going to click at the bottom where it says watch the film. And I get to a page where it says, hey, you can buy uh, this film to watch it. You can rent it for $7 for 30 days, or you can buy it for $300. But let's say I want to rent it for $6.98. Now, you're going to have a special code that's going to take away the $6.98. And the first thing you have to do is click that movie ticket icon or the say, I'm going to rent it. And when you do, you'll get presented with this uh, page that says, hey, you need to be a member of Vimeo. You have to have a Vimeo website in order to watch this film. Now, you can join with your Facebook account. It's one click. Or if you have an email address, you can set up. Um, if I click join with Google, it knows that I already have an account. And it'll grab my uh, credentials from my computer, log me in. It knows who I am. And now I can see the film. Uh, and what I have to do is say, I'm going to rent it. But before I do that, the magic button right here says apply promo code. And that's where you want to go and click in the word love, L-O-V-E. Apply that and the rent for $6.98 becomes nothing. It just says continue. Your rental is up here at $6.98, your discount of $6.98, and you get to watch it for free. So you'll hit continue and then uh, you'll be able to watch now on your computer or on uh, if you plug your computer into something else or project it to a TV screen, that's how you can watch it. So that's kind of the details about how you can watch the film. But now, Natalie, is there anything else you want to tell people, remind them of if they're going to go see it? Is there anything, any final words? Yes, I want to say you did, you did great with how to watch the film. So thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, I'm just excited. Really, I mean, I, I want this film to be basically an inspiration to people. So even though the film touches on topics that might be sensitive, you know, or looked at as negative, um, you know, why are salmon sick, for example, but, um, but it's not about what's wrong with their planet right now. It's not about looking at, you know, the things that are bad or that we, we feel helpless about. It's about what do we have right now? What is going well? What can we, how can we, you know, basically make our planet better? Um, it's to inspire us to see the beauty in the planet that we have. 
inspire us to want to get outside and enjoy it, inspire us to want to have a garden and grow flowers, in, inspire us to just enjoy and, and give love back to the planet. So, And so what we're inviting people to do is to see the film sometime in the coming yes. week. And then rejoin us here on Tuesday. We'll have, we'll have a chat again, Tuesday at four o'clock. We'll have a chat about what that experience was like and talk about where we can learn more about orcas. But we might even have a guest who uh, might be able to tell us more about orcas besides yourself. We'll see how that works out. We'll try our best. Yeah. Um, before we say goodbye, if anybody had a question or comment that they want to write in the chat, um, you can just hit the little chat tool and share a comment there. But I would like to th take a minute to thank everyone for coming and let you know that this recording is going to be posted. Um, we'll share it on YouTube so that you can point other people to it. If they want to learn more about the people that are in the film and then see the film, they can follow the same directions that you do. Um, but as we wait to see if there are any comments or questions there, Natalie, thank you for uh, making this available to thank people. You. And thank you for sharing uh, your, your story about how you came across these people to put together a film. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for coming. And we hope to see you next week, next Tuesday at four. And if you have questions, we're here right now taking questions too. <laughs> Thanks, Natalie.